So let's solve this problem. We have a system that executes a power cycle while receiving 700 kilojoules in Q1, 700 kilojoules by heat transfer at a temperature of T1 being the boundary temperature at which it's coming into the system being 1500 Kelvin. And it discharges Q2 of 100 kilojoules arrow showing going out across a boundary temperature of 500. Another heat transfer of unknown magnitude Q3 occurs at a temperature of T3 equal to 700 Kelvin. Using the Clausius inequality that we turn into an equality so that we can actually work with it, but the Clausius inequality equation, determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle when the sigma, the strength of the inequality, sigma of the cycle, is 0 0.1905 kilojoules per Kelvin and the answer for the thermal efficiency we should find that it comes in at 40 percent. So how do we do this? Well if we're looking to calculate the thermal efficiency the thermal efficiency is what is our work out of the cycle W cycle divided by what comes in in the form of heat transfer to drive this what we call a heat engine right here at operating at steady state. Well, the only heat in is Q1 right here. So it's 700 kilojoules. So what we want to do is we'd like to get the work of the cycle. So if we try an energy balance for our system, let's introduce a boundary for our system, which is simply the boundary around the heat engine. So in this region right in here, that boundary has a temperature of T1. In this region where the heat transfer is crossing it, that has a boundary temperature of T2. And in this region has a boundary temperature of T3, etc. Okay, so from our energy balance, we only have one in, and that's Q1 in. And then we have out, and I'm going to treat this as a positive out. I'm just going to leave it like that. I know that the sign convention is going to have to cha little challenging here, but it's positive in the illustration and they show it going out let's treat it that way so that's an out so q2 is an out what about q3 it's a positive out and then the work of the cycle is positive out we just sort of check we're saying hey we're trying to calculate this quantity um, we do know q2 and we do know q1 but we don't know q3 well, we have one equation with two unknowns. The two unknowns are right there, Q3 and W work of the cycle. You can work all day and all night, and you will not be able to solve with one equation, two unknowns. It's just what you should learn, and we should learn in mathematics. So we need another equation. Well, this was the first law by an energy balance, why not try the second law? Or we haven't really gotten to that yet, so the equivalent is the Clausius inequality that we turn into an equality. So what is that equation? So it says that the integral around the cycle, the sum of all the del Q heat transfers coming in, divided by the boundary temperature at which they come in, that must be less than or equal to zero. So we turn it into an equality, del Q over TB, is equal to negative sigma of the cycle. All right, so this is the equation we use. Well, the hard part is that left-hand side of the equation. So we just bust it in the terms. We say, well, is there any heat transfer coming in? Sure, Q1 is coming in positive. So we divide it by TB. Now here's a little challenge. You either have to treat Q2 is negative or Q2 is positive. But I said I'm going to leave it positive. So then I'm going to say, oh, it's an out. You're removing a positive Q2 over the T2. I should have said a T1 here. See, that's what they're using, T1 of 1500. Likewise, you see that Q3 divided by T3. All right. 
So those are all of my heat transfers. In this equation, is there anything associated with this W of the cycle? There's nothing. W of cycle does not affect, it, or it's not in this left-hand side of the Clausius equation. So this is now equal to negative sigma of the cycle. Let's pause for a minute and check. Is this given? Sure, it's given right here in the problem statement. Do we know the temperature T3? Yes. Temperature T2? Yes. Temperature T1? Yes. Q1? Yes. How about Q2? Yes. The only unknown in this equation is Q3. So we can calculate for Q3. So Q3, let me see if I can do this in a couple of steps. Let's leave it over T3 for a second. Is equal to you're going to have the Q1 over T1 minus the Q2 over T2 plus the sigma of the cycle. And then if you wanted to bring that T3 over, multiply now about everything with T3. And there you go. There's equation for Q3. So if we substitute numbers, we're going to have that uh, 700 kilojoules divided by our 1500 Kelvin, subtract from it, our 100 kilojoules divided by our T2, 500 Kelvin, add to that our 0 0.1905 kilojoules per Kelvin, good, then multiply by T3, 700 Kelvin, check your units, the Kelvins are going to go, and you're going to left with kilojoule, and we calculate that. Q3 comes in right at um, 320.02, somewhere in there, kilojoules. All right, so that's actually a positive Q3 that I've written, but we know the direction is it's taking energy out of that heat engine. Now that we know that, we can go back to our first law. So I know this is getting messy, but we go back to this equation our first law and we have that the work of the cycle is equal to how much heat comes in at one minus the Q out at two why did I lose a three there I don't know minus the Q out at three we have our values 700 kilojoules in 100 kilojoules out and 320.02 kilojoules out all of them have units of kilojoules so the work of the cycle comes in 279.98 kilojoules. Good. Now we can return to our efficiency equation. That's 279.98 divided by our Q1 in 700. Both have units of kilojoules. Kilojoules, the units cancel. And the cycle thermal efficiency is right at 40%. Well, I hope you found that helpful. We're done with this problem.